Henderson, Citizen Reps, Benjamin Bowers, Rob Caldwell, myself, Mr. Chair, and staff, uh, Rep. City Manager, City Clerk, and Public Safety Department, Public Works. Citizens. First item on agenda will be the Metro report. The director's bringing that up. Okay. So he should be up in a second. All right. And code enforcement, the code enforcement report is in the package. Okay. Uh, the director, the chief is sick. Okay. While we're waiting here uh, for that, the uh, this knocked out number two is the usual uh, resolution approving the 114th uh, Blossom Tax Parade. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, before you get to that, can I give a little report from the city manager's office on some matters? Okay, with you. Yeah. We'll go back to the uh, Yeah. One of the things that one of the things that I implemented is the citizen concern mm -hmm. sheet. Uh, where all, I'm asking all anytime you have something that you see, want it to be called in. So we can get on it right away, not wait for meetings to do it. And since I started in end of July, first of August, we've had 116 call-ins. And on this list, most of those have been completed. Some of them are still pending, but that tells us that the residents are believing that we're going to do something. So I'm going to show you those. Here they are. I want to look at them. How are you, you think of, uh, do you know how we're getting the information out to uh, we doing some things to uh, different, a little bit on communication? Uh, communication, we, we have it on the, I think we have it on the website. Do we have the concern sheet on the website? Uh, I do not know. Do not know. I don't, I don't know that. I'm sorry okay. about that. But uh, we're getting the word out. Everybody that's calling, and when they call other departments, when they talk to commissioners, uh, they're telling them to call, call here. So we, we started off by putting it down and then it gets assigned and then it gets completed. Commissioner Okay. Well, seeing that we are moving a step in the right direction, uh, we just we still have work to do with getting up that uh, information out but we're, we're getting there so that's that's a good sign let's go anything else uh, Mr. manager that that's, you have that's it director mcginnis are you ready for the metric report yes sir uh, we got wrong information so we'll go in but i'll, I'll borrow some stats uh real quick kind of got a kind of a big agenda today Greetings, Happy New Year. Um, I mean, this is the part of the time of year where I work on the end of the year for the whole year. So you'll ultimately see that report, those metrics, as well as the, the annual report. Um, so one thing I'm, I'm really pleased to report for um, some of the things that we looked at is how invasions. When I first took over, that was really a major, major problem. 2012, we had 400 burglaries. This year, 1976. So we've been steadily trending downward, and you'll see these things. I apologize for bringing not having an adapter. Trending downward, really good. So we want to keep it that way. Uh, robberies also trended down. 2014, 85. 
So obviously any robbery is bad. A5 is terrible. 19 is moving in the right direction. So we're pretty pleased with that. Last year was 28, 2017 was 36. So we're seeing our trends going uh, downward. Uh, calls for service, uh, RLS also. Um, back in Twenty twelve, we had twelve thousand seven hundred and seventy five. Again, we've been steadily moving downwards. Twenty nineteen, we ended up having eight thousand one hundred and thirty one. So again, I didn't do percentages, and of course, I'm on the map. You need so I can't swoop it up in my head. Oh, hey, yeah, that too. Um, let's call you, but I was talking to you. I apologize. We've got one other thing I want to put in. So um, numbers are good. So on the flip side, twenty twenty. The police department, what our goal is, two things. One, reducing gun violence in the community. We had a big meeting today with from Brass from the state police, Marion County, um, drug team. So we got to put a plan, plan in place. There'll be more information on that or report, as well as hopefully we can talk about that in the forum. The other thing is to help reduce citizen apathy. So what I'm doing is we were, we've been here for almost six years now, putting together the next five year plan to address those issues. Um, one of the things is we try to address citizen apathy. Uh, block of neighborhood watches, um, trying to get people to the point where they're, they're comfortable to see something, say something. Uh, one of the things he knows for our crime control strategy is removing the the uh, victimization, reducing victimization, meaning you take away opportunities for crime. Most crimes are done because of opportunity. You know, if I see you got an open door, you left for the weekend, I can walk right into your TV, then I'll do it. If you're well lit, bars and doors, Cameras in, it's not the same opportunity. So part of that is education for our people. Uh, we talked about briefly in the past months about protect DNA, where you can like physically put DNA on your important properties, your TVs, your games, or whatever that's specifically for you. Uh, you know, we have our, our tip 401. We want to also bring in something called Smart 911, where you can register yourself, your family members, any property you have, so in case something happens, an emergency. You know, if I could come up, hey, this person might have high blood pressure or he has such, such medication or this child is allergic to penicillin, for example, those kind of things that help us be more effective as far as uh, emergency service that we launch. So statistically, with the last couple of days, home invasions trend down, burglaries trend down. Um, as you, we have upward for homicides. We had uh, three in, in 2019, five and 18, four and 17, kind of call that flat, but our goal is, is obviously not. So we're going to be working on that. Um, and additionally, uh, we talked about the other meetings, stolen vehicles. Those have, have ramped up from you know, 51 this year, 59 last year. Look at years like 2015 and 14, where there were 23. So we understand where they're coming from, what's going on with them. The Texas are doing a great job. So one of the things I want to focus on in 2020 is there's a lot of good things we've done in the first five years. And what I want to talk about is what we can do better as far as public outreach and violence. That's going to be our platform. So that's that. Additionally, if you don't mind, sir, uh, this is um, um, oh my God, Mary Ann Grove, who is, remember we had the, the Turkey Trot 5K mm -hmm. and Pal was a, the charity organization recipient. Mm -hmm. She's going to tell us real quick how that went and present us with a check. So, um, you come to the mic. Oh, sure. Yeah. Right, don't just don't just work. doesn't work. Come on, please. I guess I'm going to be standing next to the car. Real <laughs> stand. So, um, so, um, so, um, so, um, this year we had, um, 500 and over 530 people registered for the race. We have people that come from all over the U.S. to run in downtown Benton Harbor, and they just love it. We have people that bring families, and um, so with that, um, today I'm going to be presenting a check for $4,250 to the um, Benton Harbor Police Athletic League. So oh, we. We appreciate the support that um, the Public Safety Department <laughs> has brought to this race. This was the fifth year that we've done it, but this is the first year that we've um, 
have the proceeds benefit the police athletic league. And it's just a great opportunity for people to come into the city of Baton Harbor and just see what's out there. Also. And there's Cole and Love too. They're all, in, they're all lined up right in front of City Hall. Could you? Yeah. <laughs> Could you do some both yeah. regular and portrait? Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 Oh. Yeah. 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 of the building chief i'd like to just give her information okay um we had four building permits came to 141 dollars well actually a total of 715 dollars and uh, we had six electrical permits It came to a total of uh, $625. Okay, the grand construction, grand total construction fees was $31,830. And the grand total of uh, electrical permits was six hundred. I'm sorry, one thousand six hundred seventy-eight dollars. Yeah. 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 Oh. That's it, Mr. Chief. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mathis. We'll move to the uh, next item. Oh. Can I make a request from you, Chair? Is that <clears throat> when I was the uh, chair of the committee, mm -hmm. there was a great communication line. And we all got the metric report sent to us online. I've had a conversation with the city uh, chief about it. Would you please? Have that conversation with him as well. And make sure that we all get that information. It's it's a lot of information about what's going on in our city, and it's a uh, it's a uh, vital that we you know what what's going on in our neighborhoods uh, around the corner. You refer to uh, the metric all, report. All the commissioners. All the commissioners. Okay. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Do the note, and it will be done. Thank you. Let's move. Uh, any other questions on that? We'll move on to the next item on the uh, agenda: is the resolution approving the 114th uh, Blossom Pack Parade. Uh, that information on that. It's usually just a uh, standard uh, uh, resolution that will just. Uh, Pass on to the commission. Right. Item number three, we added in the uh, water replacement, water meter replacement. Uh,
Good evening. I'm Tim Drews with Abbott Marsh Consultants. Thank you, Commissioner, for the time to talk about residential water meters. So back in 2016 and 2017, as part of the SAW grant project, the city replaced 2,231 water meters, which was the emphasis there was to do as many of the larger water meters as we could and then do as many residential, you know, five a steps, normal water meters with the money that was allotted. So that was a pretty successful project and it was all grant funded. In spring of 2018, the city was awarded an FPCBT grant to replace the remainder of the water meters. And this grant was for $309,500. And it basically allows for the city to purchase water meters and then to hire a contractor to install these water meters. The number of water meters that we anticipate are going to be replaced with this project are 238 more. So this should get us to the 99.9 .9 or 100% of the water meters in the city will be replaced at this point. More accurate, better billing, and um, you know, basically replacing water meters that were 20 to 25 years old and getting them new with the master meters that the city is now using. So on December 5th, we took bids, sit at the city clerk's office, and two bids were received for the replacement work. One bid was from B&Z Company here in Benton Harbor for $76,120. The second bid was from Ace Plumbing for $149,350. Obviously, the $76,000 number is the lower number. B&Z actually did the work when the saw grant happened, and they did the work 25 years ago when the original water meters were replaced. So they know the program, they know the system. I think that other bid was what it was. The pricing was right in line with what they did two, two years ago with the other water meter project. So we would recommend a word to B and Z for this project so that we can get started on it here in the next couple of months. Um, this grant has an expiration date of 2022, so we have time. And they, we intend that this will be done in the next six to nine months that this, uh, all, all of this project will be done. So that's our request, and uh, I'll take any questions or anything like that. I've got some questions for you. Sure. Uh, it's only 216, right? 238 is what 38. Yeah. And um, it seemed like both of them are charging you for like, a general hookup for a service line, eight hundred dollars. Was it eight hundred dollars per meter? One hundred eighty dollars per meter. That's basically that's their time to, to get into the house, disconnect the old meter, and then reinstall the new meter. So basically, that's the cost is one hundred eighty one hundred eighty dollars per meter to install the new meter. Yes. And if and if that money is not all used, does it go back? If we so yeah, the, the, we're trying to maximize this this three hundred nine thousand dollars that was given as a grant. So, so what if, happens today? If you don't use it, it, it goes back. Correct. So we, we're going to do everything we can to use that money, use that money out. And it won't go to the city if, if you don't use it. It won't. It's specifically for water meter purchase, and water meter installs. That's that's how the grant was written, was uh, awarded or written. That's a high price. <laughs> It's actually, you know, that's that's the price that they they had a couple of years ago too. So it's it's right in line. With I, what they I think I we replaced twenty five hundred meters, three guys at the council. We replaced all in, internally by yeah you know, yeah. We replaced a two inch, and plus we had to put uh, uh, not only the high pros but we had to program them, and it took us about six months. Right. All the way from Haven Shores all the way down. Right. So, but since the money won't go back to the city, then we got to spend it. And the city, the city, the city staff can do some of the work. You know, they have some of it has already has already happened. So, so what's this mean right here? Curb stop excavation. That's if they can't turn the the water off. If they, if they can't, if the curb stop so is broken, yeah, they, so they, they, they pick, pick up, up the curb box and shut it off at the 
at the curb stop and then exactly okay because exactly. they can't get the water and that's a that's a contingency number that basically if they have to use it it's not going to happen very often so but that's, there are some that's two happen. men with a with a post hole digger digging down to shut off the curb block pretty much right. they, unless they have to get a, a mini excavator out that's there, but it's, it's, right A lot of money. Do, uh, put some on that. do you have uh, uh, do the grant allow for reimbursement if you did do some of it uh, in house? Absolutely, okay. absolutely. Okay. Because I think some have, have, have already happened, just a few, you know, here and there when a new water meter is needed or an old water meter quits working. The water department will go out and change that meter out and, and so, discharge it. I'm sorry, too. So why yeah. are you still putting in five eighths and three quarters? Why don't you just put in three quarters? The, the standard size is the five eighths. That's that's what that's what the city has used. That's what because we use. Five eighths is, is will be strict. That's old school. Everybody now uses three quarters. They the, the five eighths. Yeah. Other municipalities use yeah. three quarter. This is this is what uh, we we work with Michael Malley and the water department, and this is <coughs> this is what the city is 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 putting in. There's a different also. There's a different fee for. There's a different fee for the different size. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. Five quarters and three and five eighths and three quarters are both the same price. Should be. I don't know. I don't think they are in, in the city. Some of it already been done now. Um, then I think, you know, staff, that's my view. We can check on that to see how much reimbursement that we could be eligible for. <clears throat> you might as well get the bank for the buck. <laughs> um, Chair, do um, you have any? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Lucy, you had anything? Uh, no, no, sir. <laughs> okay. Uh, anybody got anything else? Anything else? Hey. <laughs> Commissioner uh, Adams, you got something? Yes, sir. Okay. No, I just like to warm in your seat. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Um, <laughs> in times past, in times past, uh, I, I requested um, a listing of the homes that had been uh, uh, meters that had been replaced, so that we could keep that data. And I never saw that list, but it would be really good if we could get that list of those that are previously been uh, uh, remetered. Um, I, I, I dare not touch what Mr. Benjamin knows about all this, but I thank you. And I know that the city is going to pay the cost up front and we'll have to wait reimbursement if we're dealing with a grant. Uh, I, I dare not try to spend somebody else's money though either, but be just as respectful of theirs as our own. Um, my question becomes when, when, when there's a replacement of, of, of something else that may go wrong, that need to go beyond the meter, and uh, uh, something needs to be dug up, and it needs to go further out to the street or something that needs to be fixed, are you all replacing what may be, well, not destroyed, but I mean, like, I, I just never understood it because almost 15 years ago, my husband and I, we had to dig up by hand uh, uh, the line to the street, and I guess the city did the street part, and that hole is still there. Grass grows up out of it now. When something like that happens, you cut through that concrete, you're replacing it. Yep. Uh, Thank you, uh, Chair. Um, when they brought the side grant to us, 
We had a long discussion about what this grant was going to do. And then they said, well, we put in meters. Now I'm hearing that we really didn't put in all meters. So I need a full understanding of where that saw grant went and why it wasn't enough to do all the meters in the city. So now you don't have to get it to a whole lot of commissioners. Just give it to me and I'll spread the news. I don't work like that. You don't work like that. That's what I like. Okay. Well, I need to I need to see that and understand that saw grant because in my back of my mind I heard him say that this was gonna do the job. Yeah. Now I also I'll say that B and Z is in my ward and I have good understanding with them. So when I when they first started going around knocking on doors, I didn't see anybody that looked like me. So I went to him and I said, what's up with that? He said, well, we got the contract and we hired four new people. I said, you couldn't hire nobody from Benham? We had that conversation with me. We went around and around. And the next thing I knew, he hired some people from Benham. <coughs> they didn't stay the whole term, the time period, but he did. And so I'm asking you, oh, I'm asking someone <laughs> to make sure that it's Benton Harbor residents. Yep. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to unscrew this and put a new one up. Yep. They're not programming it. Yep. They're not doing any of that. Yep. And is it is it some way for them to verify where the meter goes in, if it's lead or not? That is another record keeping thing that we need to do because of the state requirement for lead or steel in the water, in our pipes. So I like doing do double things. Um, so I like to see that happen too. They're in there. They have an opportunity to look at from this 18 inch into the house, what's there? Cause they're connecting you to it. And I surely want to see some jobs for, for my people. <clears throat> and if, if, if it comes from us, I won't have to go and talk and have a conversation with my my big small business owner in my world. It just comes from us and after a while, it'll be standard practice. They'll just come and say, oh, they know that we know that they want us to find Ben Harbor residents for these jobs that they're getting contracts. Can you answer the question on the uh, lead efforts? Uh, what checking for the uh, lead? So, as far as the actual the investigation on what's coming through the wall, that's absolutely part of the new form that we have. That they're going to have to write down: is it lead? Is it copper? Is it is it galvanized? So, that's absolutely going to happen in every house that they get into to change out the meter. I mean, that's that's pretty straightforward, easy one for me to answer. I can also talk a little bit about the saw grant. Half of the money that was issued for the saw grant was for water meters. The other, the other half was for inventory of the system, condition assessment of the system, and the asset management plan that comes out of that. So, of the saw grant money, not all of it was was allocated for for water meters, and we maximized the dollars that we that we had to do as much as we could. I can't speak to the yeah, we're gonna replace them all. And I, I wasn't a part of that when that all started, but. I, can, I know that we maximize the amount that we can do with them for the dollars they have. Okay. Uh, also, the, uh, you know, the uh, I know there's some type of grant for uh, replacing the, uh, the, the line from the road to the house. That, we have. that was another grant to, to do a pilot program to, to replace services from the curb stop into the house. Right. Yes, and that's, now, that was another grant. Have that been completed? That has been completed. Okay. Changing the line, I think that's already done. Mr. Bob, I, I need two clarifications on the subject. But first, you did a pilot on replacing from the court all the way 18 inches into the house. 
Well, well let me, I'll, I'll clarify that. Sorry, I misspoke. So it was an investigation of what the, the, the material was at the court, either side. And if we found lead or if we found galvanized, then it was our full replacement from the main into the home. So why did you have to do that when there's record of that? There are good records. Yeah, yes, there is. <laughs> and the same. You, you could have went to the township and asked them because we got records of both Ben Harbor and the township. Ben Harbor wow. 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 So, like my street, 1100 block of Union, 1200 block of Union, all led yeah. a combination of, 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 of galvanized. Right. I know that on the back. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Mine was put in in 1937. Okay, so another quick care question, care for, mm, tongue tied. Um, internal investigation of plumbing repair. Why is that? Because you're only going 18 inches into the house upstream of the meter. You got to replace that valve anyway if it's broken. That's really one of these. If, if they come and they find that it's, it's crumbling, they What's take it upstream or downstream. Basically, inside the house. Yeah, you know, this is this is inside the house. They take the old meter off and they find that they have to start chasing it to find a good connection point. This is a contingency factor again, our contingency item, so that we can make sure that- Chasing it for what? If you have an old crumbling pipe, sometimes you get in there and, and those pipes are- Yeah, galvanized. Coming yeah. into the wall, or if you got copper coming into the wall. Right. If after it's, that. It's, it's just a matter of, of, they need to have a secure, solid connection when they're all said and done. And in the last round, we found the meter, the customer is responsible for that. But the, if they are, absolutely are. But we can't leave it so it's leaking and in a mess. So that, this is a contingency factor to replace the meter and, and find a solid connection for it. It's only used if they find it. It's not in every meter, it's just only used when they find it. Any questions? What did you say to you? Uh, well, well, I, I speak on that. Well, what happens in a, a lot of situations when we go in these houses and they replace the meters, even if it's leaking on the customer side? Well, what happens, the customer gets mad and start calling the city and start complaining about it. So, who to respect the responsibility of it? So, we try to get it corrected from the beginning so to the end. So what you do is when the meter go, when you put the meter in, if the customer doesn't have it straight downstream of the meter, you keep the water off until they get it straight. Oh, that's right. So now, now that's what, that, that's, that's why in township, in township we, world, we but in Ben yeah. Harbor, but you got to let them know sure. this date. We're putting the meter in this date, this time. Uh, have the plumber there so you can have the connection downstream. Oh, because <laughs> okay. what's going to happen, we're going to have a lot of complaints and a lot of water talk. Alright, uh, we got no one here now. That's what I said. Do you have anything to say? I don't like it. Commissioner Henderson is asking you that. That's fine. Commissioner Henderson, you got something? No. Okay. Not my area of expertise. Okay. You, you, you asked my question. He asked my question. What do you have? Okay. Uh, I just make another request to the chair for the city manager that pilot there's questions about how that pilot was spent i'd like to make sure that we get that information as well mm -hmm. and and then i always ask Avermark, how much administrative money do they give or what what other monies can they have they keep out of these grants because you know, the other night when i asked the question they said, oh, we didn't get anything, but that was administrative money. And then the other and the uh, came that it was some money that was, but it was for not administrative money, it was some other kind of money. So I need to know a breakdown of those two, the sovereign and the pilot And any other that had to do with sewer, water in the last three, four years. Because I can remember grand after grand and it don't seem like it's working for some reason. Not in house. So please make sure that we can do that research. So be careful. I took note of that. I took note, but 
You are helping me out every time you open your mouth for the need for a <coughs> retreat to discuss these things thank you. in detail. Well, thank you're you. new, and I thank you. No. But this is old stuff that old never stuff, got solved. New stuff needs to be discussed. Yeah, do your thing. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else got any other questions? I, I do. Uh, Commissioner Adams. Yes, sir. You mentioned a hole in front of your house that's still there? No, sir. No, sir. No. Actually, praise God, all the late been done this past fall um, with the uh, tax dollars. No, it's on Ohio side. There was a piece of the concrete that was cut up. And, you know, I haven't even noticed it lately. I got so used to riding over it. But it's actually a, a, a big block of dirt that, that grows up grass. So I just cut it when I cut the grass. Because it you was You know what you're talking about, Mr. Meeks? No, I don't. Can you check that tomorrow? Thanks. Okay. We'll move this on. Okay. Back the, uh... no, sir, Jerry, you know, it, it just dawned on me. I didn't, I didn't forget, I forgot to ask one question. The meters that were replaced last year and year before, there was a, 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 a small talk about different sizes. Why is that? Why is there different sizes of meters? Well, is can I answer that, too? Go ahead. Well, a long time ago, service lines were not a long time ago the ones that were just did okay, last just year did. before well, as opposed to these you have you have one inch three quarter half inch service service lines are used to going now it's all one inch it's best to use three quarter meter with a one inch service line because you get more flow if you got a five eighths short or five eighths long other municipalities are getting away from that. Okay, you, you're losing me, but I'm just glad that knowledge, is in, knowledge is in the room. And I'm just asking that because I heard the differentiation when the gentleman was speaking. And I guess I just really want to know if those that were done last year and the year before that were replaced in some of the homes are sufficient enough as opposed to the ones that they're, they're the same ones. Okay, good deal. Thank you. All right. Uh, just make sure, note that the city engineer is nodding yes to the answer yeah. to the yeah. answer yeah. to the yeah. question. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's move on to uh, the, uh, we got somebody here for the senior PGA here. Okay. Chair, thank you for the time, commissioners, um, city manager, Ms. Thompson, the clerk. Uh, my name is Ryan Noble. I'm with the PG of America, overseeing the KitchenAid Senior PGA Championship here at Harbor Shores. We're excited to come back to Bend Harbor, our home, um, this May 2020 um, for our fifth playing of the championship here in, in Bend Harbor. Um, the past four events, we were fortunate enough to work with the city to come to an agreement on some use of some gene clock parcels, some other ground parcels. Um, that we need that are surrounding the golf course to ensure safety um, to our spectators, to ensure um, um, proper access control, as well as um, the use of putting up some temporary structures in and around Gene Cloth Park um, for the week of the championship. Uh, it's been the same agreement since 2012, uh, all four years. Um, we're looking to do, um, do that again for 2020. Um, I was able to find a little bit better depiction of the areas in question that I have here. If uh, I didn't bring enough copies for everyone, but if you'd like, I can provide them to the uh, members of the committee. Yeah. Yeah. There are plenty of this top one. Uh, there's only a few of the Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So, if we're looking at the, the color map, it's really just the areas that are kind of um, denoted in green. So there are multiple parcels that are included in this uh, this agreement. Again, this is all part of spectator flow, um, uh, safety of our spectators, um, and then the other area is Gene Clock Park um, specifically. The ability to um, put up some temporary structures inside of the park along inside of hole seven, eight, nine, uh, where the golf course sits now. Uh, there is a small portion of parking that we utilize during the championship right at the entrance of Gene Clock Park. And in the black and white photo, it is the red section that we use. We still keep access open to that parking lot. You still collect revenues from the parking into the blue column. Last but not least, um, one part is also making sure that um, no concerts or um, public events are hosted at the pavilion at the beach during our championship, um, just because of it is a, a golf event. Um, if there were loud music coming from the structure the Tuesday through the Sunday of our championship, it would be a distraction to uh, the championship and to the national broadcast that televises our community to 250 million households. That kind of summarizes everything here. Uh, I didn't know if maybe there were specific questions. Or tell us anything that I can help answer. Yeah. Commissioner um. Ashley, thank you, Honorable Chair. I just wanted to ask so you want to rent the, the park, I think it's May 11th, right? You know, that is one that is one thing that I didn't notice in the agreement. Um, May 11th through the May 25th, is that, that date is actually incorrect, the first day. Mm -hmm. We would just need it May um, 18th through the 25th, the week of the championship. And the rental fee says you want $2,200. Uh, the agreement would be $2,200. Yes, sir. And that's the way it's been for the last four events. Four events. And what is that for? Is that that is really that is really to help offset the um, potential lost revenue of the uh, pavilion. Mm -hmm. So for those six days, we ask that you do not rent that out. Mm -hmm. um, historically, and this agreement was put in place before my time, but from my understanding, historically you haven't been that that wouldn't be rented out all those seven <coughs> seven days. Excuse mm -hmm. me, it would just potential on a couple of days there. So that would take that would take care of any potential lost revenue from that pavilion. And the public still have access to correct to so the park to the uh, beach. Correct. And uh, what about uh, public safety now? I mean, we supply public safety to this for this event for those days. You know. Yes, absolutely. So uh, Mr. Clark and his team and and, and Director McGinnis um, do help us out from a security perspective. Mm -hmm. <coughs> to the chair, how is that paid for? That yeah. paid for by the Will be my question. How's that? How's that co uh, cost? Cheap. Yep. Are we traditionally get money from them to go for the time? Um, that that week is uh, traditionally costs us more than twenty thirty one thousand dollars overtime. However, as we originally as we go on, we become smarter, better at manning posts and having. Uh, being uh, better as far as manpower. So, uh, for example, one thing I uh, forgot to mention of the donations as far as motorizing our bikes for the course. So there's money that comes into the PGA, uh, or coming to us from the PGA, go to our personnel. I don't know what those numbers are, so I was involved in that. That's the personnel. But I do know. So we ain't got money to pass. Okay. Okay. 
we yes, exactly. Also utilize a lot of the reserves and yes, yeah. Let's see one more question. How did you say? I don't know how the twenty-two thousand come up. What number? Who made that number? I know he wasn't involved. Twenty-two hundred. Uh, twenty-two hundred. Yeah. Yeah, you went involved. Nope, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just a number that was thrown out there. And just given again, it, it was before my time. Um, um, this was created before the 2012 event, and um, and it's just something that's stated. Oh. I'm happy to um, have a discussion, and I was sent to the city for review, and, and yeah. happy to have anything out. Yeah. So glad you're here. Well, 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 you guys for business class. Yeah, the. We've been waiting for an opportunity to do some renegotiating. Commissioner Adams, you got it. Yes, sir. Good to hear. Um, I would dare not not do anything to stop this event that, that has shed some positive light on our community. Not a, a lot of things happen in Ben Harbor that are, 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 are good over the course of the last 30 years, but we're growing, we're moving, and, and, and growth must continue. About four years ago, there was a young man through the chair that spoke that was actually over the whole PGA the morning of the breakfast. That, uh, was that you? Oh, okay, because <laughs> I don't remember because I'm, I'm getting older. I was asleep like four years ago or so. But anyway, you made the statement about how you all wanted to work with the city of Benton Harbor to help to aid in its further growth and, and endeavors of, of doing some things for the community. And I think when I woke up, walked up to you and spoke with you in regards to that, that I was going to hold you to it through the chair. And I guess today would be that day. Okay. Um, I mean, it's such a beautiful event. You know, on Sundays we watch these things in the in the midst of just just turning the TV on a Sunday evening and watching these people out on the field hitting a golf ball. Mister, may I please? Um, never knew exactly what it was, but it's actually soothing, stressful, stress relieving, and it's actually fun when you actually engage in it. I, I'm not a golfer, but I have did some practice stuff along my way. And it is very soothing. And for this community, and a lot of stressful stuff that goes on in it, more of us probably need to get out there and, and hit some balls, for real, instead of with our tongues amongst each other. Um, help us with that as well. But on, on a financial note, there are some things that we have been trying and struggling real hard with for our children, our youth in the community. I mean, and you probably give to the boys and girls clubs and, and, and the youth before as well, but they can't service all of our children. And we've been working hard and trying to get our armory up and running, our parks to be utilizable for more things and events. And I'm just hoping that through the chair that you will be a man of your word. Can I can I respond to this? Yes, question? please. So um We've been very fortunate to do a lot of great things um, in all of our host communities, Ben Harbor being one of three that we operate this championship in. Um, this, in December, we had our fifth annual holiday food sharing, where we gave away over 400 holiday meals to inner city Ben Harbor um, families, um, service for 400 families. Um, every year, we've partnered with um, the parks department to plant trees and help light a certain park in Ben Harbor. Um, to date, we've donated almost a million dollars to Boys and Girls Club, as you mentioned, uh, First Tee, Ben Harbor Promise, and most recently a hundred thousand dollar donation in 2018 to the Ben Harbor Athletic Department. Um, we, we care about that. In 2018, we also started a scholarship for um, graduates uh, of Ben Harbor High Schools that use the Ben Harbor Promise that use that graduated with their associates. We donated um, or created a scholarship that will give them twenty five thousand dollars to pursue a four year. Um, we definitely 100% want to, our vision is when we're done here, people to say, it was good that we beat you. We're a reflection of you, you're a Absolutely. reflection of us. Absolutely. And if we don't work together in peace and harmony, then we both look bad. And I agree 100%. Yeah, um, yeah. And when we're trying, can, yeah. you can always improve, you can always do better, yeah. and we're going to continue yeah. to look at how we do yeah. that. 
I was listening to my colleague through the chair, and I think that that, that number, as I was reading over the document last evening, uh, that I think it was 2,200. That thousand. <laughs> It was troubling to me too, especially after seeing that check that was just wrote for just our officers. I mean that donation. But um, I, I just wanted to. I mean, I guess we need to have that dialogue, that conversation, to for the whole community to hear the things that you do do. I mean, we're not going to fix and and build things that are wrong in our community overnight. I get that, and you are doing. I appreciate what you are doing. Um, and of course, the have nots always want more. <laughs> let's, right. just, let's just let's uh, just um can we thank uh, you. Thank you. I have your card. I'll be in touch. Can we ask that uh, also the uh, the your information you just gave to uh, well, I was up on some of it, but not all of it, but I'd like to somehow get the whole uh, statement as to you know what you have gained to yeah, you know, absolutely i can also share the uh the estimated economic impact branding i mean there's a lot of good stuff right um yeah. share that with the manager okay. yep. no, we get that. Yeah. another ringing endorsement for the retreat yep. <laughs> uh, Mr. Edwards, Commissioner, Commissioner Edwards, thank you. Uh, uh, one question for the chair. Uh, how does the volunteers work at the PTA? Um, we just sign some papers and I want to volunteer. Yeah, absolutely. So, so there's no pay. I don't have um, to pay. Correct. So a uh, majority of our volunteers do pay a fee. Um, we do have a program for uh, individuals that are in need there, we call it, is there a, a foundation that would like to remain anonymous um, to help up to 50 individuals that are unable to afford that fee. Yeah. Um, and we have some community members that do some outreach to that. Yeah. Um, and if you are interested in partaking as a volunteer, we'd love to have you. All you have to do is really stop by our office and we would take care of all that. Our office is at the golf course uh, along the first team. So my second question is, where does the money go? Me. Where does that money go that comes from the volunteers? Absolutely. If I'm volunteering and I gotta give a hundred and whatever it is, where does that go? That uh, that goes towards the uniform that's provided, uh, shirt, hat, and jacket, and goes towards um, some of the other uh, items that we give volunteers, as well as um, the discount around the call at Carver Shoals. Discounting. Ah, for the whole city. No, it's for just for our volunteers. So we got to pay for the uniform. Uh -huh. I got to put that one. <laughs> All right. Mr. Duncan. Yeah. You've been already close. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> Do it officially now. Do it officially to get. And I thank you for everything that you do for Ben Harbor. You really are a kind guy. You seem to be. But I that $2,200. You guys smile and say that's all right for another year. If you smile and tap dance and say that's all right. The citizens here, they hear this. You know how large that event is? You know how long they've been doing it? And we get the little kibbles and bit per year and whatever else he gives somewhere else away to. <clears throat> you know how much those holes, those last three holes on the golf course is? Maybe we should charge a million dollars a hole and then we wouldn't feel like we was I would let me say this change that up because I think I'm about the only one to feel this way. Since they don't have what it take to understand where I'm coming from. The last three holes of the golf course probably should be a million dollars a piece, and that could go straight into our school system. 
the way we hand or giving out turkeys and few mill scholarships, we have enough to generate and do some things for ourselves. It ain't about what they're giving us. They're taking our beach over for as long as they take it over because that's exactly what it is. Citizens have no real root to the area when the PGA is there. They can lie and say what they do or whatever to make it possible for us, but it's not available for us and they owe us more. And I don't know which one of you guys are going to be the one to decide how much it is, but maybe you should let the citizens decide on it if you guys don't have nothing, or if you guys don't have what it takes to, to come up with a fair figure for the city of Ben Harbor. Using our beach, taking it over for how long was that again? Excuse me, through the chair? But six days was it? Eight. eight. It'd, be, it'd be seven days. Seven days. Correction. Yeah, that is not. And, and just to clarify, we do not take away the beach um, access to the beach whatsoever. You, you take the entry way in, but two ways in and two ways out. And then you can say they're open. You can also say that when I get there, there's a handicapped spot waiting on me too. You can say that, but it's not like that. We don't have. Go ahead, go ahead. No, I don't have a person. You trying to stop me? No, I just want to interject. All I want to do is raise the damn fee. I ain't interested in nothing else. I, I could not be sitting here anymore. Raise the fee. Make the city. If you don't know how to do it, or city manager don't know how to do it. Get all the commissioners together and y'all figure it out and come up with a, a, a righteous fee for our beach and the time that they're taking over it. And I'm expecting that because we've, we've been through this year after year and you guys act like you don't hear citizens when they come in here and say what they're doing. We said the same thing about how they take over the, the river and you don't do anything. This time, this is another year and if you don't want to see me again, start doing the right thing for the citizens. Thank you. Um, no, you got to thank you. You got a question. Help the way you're supposed to help. Question. Uh, the uh, only thing is not uh, uh, accessible would be the pavilion. Is that option? Right. right. Well, the, the, the pavilion would be accessible. The one on the beach, I can't remember the exact name. I Mars Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, it would be accessible. We would just we would just ask that basically we would not rent that out for those seven days um, for public event or so, okay. so my my recommendation. So I hear what they're saying. So the, the pavilion is eight hundred bucks. Seven, because it's one thing to to have an issue, but not to recommend something. Because if I'm hearing you correctly, you're saying um, we're fine with paying whatever, we're just going by the agreement. So if the pavilion rents out for 800 bucks. So that would be a total of $5,600 for the week. And so that's what it would um, equal out to. So what people are saying is just pay the $800 that will cost to rent the pavilion for the seven days. That's it. And so and I think that is very fair. And, and that was something that, uh, you know, as we said in talk, is what is fair. And that sounds fair. And I have a couple other comments. So the first year, I think the, the first or the second year, I had an opportunity to volunteer um, for this event um, through that organization. Someone bought um, the uniform, which was $125, in fact, the organization that I work for. And so in that um, opportunity that I had, I had uh, an opportunity to see the inside of the working of how it went and the number of people that actually surprised me. I had a, a relative that comes from Tennessee to actually volunteer in that event, didn't know it until I volunteered. So people are coming from all over the country, which was a shocker to me, paying the money to actually volunteer in this event. And it was amazing to see the number of people who were actually helping with this event. And so I think it was two years in a row, my husband serves as a volunteer police officer, so he does with the security as well. And it's one of his favorite <laughs> events. 
for a lot of different reasons. And so I'm saying this to say that one thing I did not see as I walked the golf course was many people from Benton Harbor. And so I was thinking to myself, what an opportunity the people of Benton Harbor are missing because of the mindsets about what this event is. Yeah. I saw little kids, I saw all kinds of people from all over there walking through, taking part in the free parts of the event where you could actually um, see some of the KitchenAid uh, uh, shows and some of the other things at this particular event. And so I think the people of Benton Harbor have to be open to learning new things. It was just such a joy. Um, last year, my husband's boss invited him to one of the main holes, and that was my first time sitting there. And that itself is a whole different experience with the um, golf uh, tournament itself, because you actually get to sit on the hole, you actually get to see the golfers up close, and the news media from around the world was there. Um, the best part was eating and drinking, uh, to be honest. That's the only reason I went, was just to see I actually was taking it all in. And I was just like, wow, this is Benton Harbor. Little Benton Harbor is on the map, and this event is taking place in our city. And so I was like, all of Benton Harbor really needs to take advantage of this opportunity um, to see this event. So one of the things this year, um, I work with a local school that I was going to promote this. So one thing that I would ask, are there opportunities for youth to actually go to this event um, where we don't have to pay, because there was a, a small minimal fee, but it would not be um, able to, we, there are organizations that would like to take younger people, but cannot afford to take them. So is there a way to waive a fee if people wanted to bring students from schools to actually participate in that event, to see it? Because I thought it was important that even our young people see it, even if the people who've been here, the old people like me, don't want to change our mindsets to actually be a part of it. The young people need to be a part of it. They all need to see it. Yeah. And so is there a way to do that? Um, is, the, is my ask and uh, from that. And the, my last uh, point was I was watching NBC News the other morning. It was last week. And they were talking about little bitty South. There were four places that they named. And Southwest Michigan was one of the places they named on national TV as a place to come and visit because of all of the beaches and the wineries. And I was sitting there like, did they just say Southwest Lower Michigan? They said Southwest Michigan, not Midwest, Southwest Michigan. So um, just my uh, plug for the event, I'm not a golfer, um, doesn't interest me, but just like Commissioner Adams said, it was relaxing just actually walking and seeing the stuff that was happening in Benton Harbor. So thank you. Um, I hope Benton Harbor does um, want to participate. There's a lot of things that have been wrong, but there's a lot of things that have been done right. And so this is an opportunity to partner with this event in that way so that we can actually see and be a part of it. So thank you. Well, you know, you can ask my question. I'm just <laughs> we thinking about raising the fee too. Yeah, so hey, I'm not that. Yeah, that was my question. And I do want to just go back quickly. Um, uh, we call them juniors, but students or kids or whatever you want to say, age 17 and under, are free to our championship uh, with ticketed adults. And if there's organizations that want to bring groups out. We would provide the adults for the tickets, no problem. I'll be sure to hand, give you my card before Thank I walk off. Thank you. Yeah. Well, what you no, sir. Okay. I'll say something. Like city city manager. Manager. <laughs> wow. Can I say something as city manager? That is the type of response we need to start getting from folks. Yeah. We need to start talking about solutions, yeah. stop pitching her. We got to talk about solutions, how to solve it. She sat there in a few minutes and told the man, and he said, okay. We got to talk about solutions. Yeah. Thank I you. <laughs> I think she summed it up. And in short, I also I am relatively new to the area, but uh, speak up, short please. In short, I think she summed it up. I'm relatively new, but I work for Habitat, and um, I was only going to make mention about the pavilion because I actually happened to call today to rent it out for a Habitat event, and I was quoted a third of the price that they were paying. So great, it's being solved and worked on. Um, 
Secondly, was just focusing on solutions, right? Like, uh, where does the onus fall? And I think I, I sat in a number of the, the meetings so far, different different meetings that we've had here, but uh, I have heard little talk about solutions. Um, I think that's one of the things that's like, you know, you guys are doing a lot of amazing things for the community, but if the community doesn't know that, then are you really making an impact at all? Um, because the community doesn't feel like that's what's happening. And so the onus falls both on you and yes. as on us as community members. And I think that's the question is how can we all work together? I mean, I'm here to aid in any way, in any capacity, and I'm always asking, right? So whether it's sitting down having a meeting, we host a discussion that looks very different than this looks like because we have to work on engagement with the community, we already know that. Um, but just keeping our minds open about who the onus falls on, really, it's it's us bridging gaps. Um, you know, it's great that you guys are providing scholarships. That's wonderful. But like she said, uh, th these volunteer opportunities are exposure. Right? I am where I am because I was exposed to a number of different scenarios in my lifetime as a youth. Uh, and these networking opportunities, like we have to teach our people that this is something that we should be attending and want to attend. Um, so you know, just maybe potentially working together better as partners. Yeah. I'm always open to that type of feedback. Um, and uh, I think for, for me personally, um, sometimes you just don't know what the best avenues are, the best channel to get that message out, or to find out where uh, the next uh, contribution or the next impact will be. So, what do you think you need from us to do that? Well, or just to see itself like well, it sounds like, uh, you know, maybe you and I could sure. touch base and, and see what those situations are. <laughs> 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 you guys can talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. But then, yeah. As a city manager in training, then. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't get that pitching part. Oh, Lord. So, that's right. Jesus. When I hear a word and you guys don't want to explain it, I need to understand it. Where did that come from? Me bitching all the time. Well, I ain't never you felt like that word. about you, sister. So I, I don't know where you're coming I, from I right now, because I got to cheer anyway. Wait, wait. I'm, if we're going to start slinging stuff, I got some things I can sling, some words I can sling. That's how I know what's appropriate, and I know what is not appropriate in these chambers. That's why I said, Long time ago, the laugh and the joke and the playing, we should be out of that and be serious about things. That way, there won't be no misunderstanding. I don't want no misunderstanding with this man because of you, you, or none of y'all. I want an understanding with him so he can know that his citizens will are just as concerned, if not more concerned than you are. I know our beach is worth more than that, especially for the length of time that they're taking it. And you can say they're not taking it, you can dress it up any way you want to, but it's taken. And I don't personally think Mr. Clark had that in his in his mind when he gave it to the citizens of Ben Harp, the kids of Ben Harp. We're always talking about the kids. Now you got to try to pile in on a car and go through a traffic jam to get to go see a golf course. Who's profiting from that? It ain't our citizens. Raise the fee. And if you don't think this, if you don't think I deserve it for my citizens in my community, then ask the other citizens in the community, should we be paying $2,200 a day or whatever you want to call it for them to take over our beach that Mr. Clark actually gave to the kids and not all of these others. All right. Just real, real quick also, with, with any event that happens, people take over the beach with the, with the um, explain with, something to me. even with Explain it to the city manager when you get behind closed doors so we can get a raise on you. You brought it in the public, so you, you know, so you have to have a response. Um, you got yeah, to do it. Yeah, you only one but it's just like a time, though. Please sit. Oh, okay. So I was just going to say, with, with, with a lot of um, events that people have, I know with the Blues Fest that happens, 
the same thing happens. And so it just happens to be a different organization. Whether you agree with it or not, the same thing happens. So the people that rent the beach, except for it is not for that length of time, we've asked for the increase, so it's going to happen. So it's just a matter of coming up with a solution. I don't think anybody has a problem with doing anything if it's being asked. But a closed mouth won't get fed, as we all know. So if you have a question or a solution for something, just <laughs> we're open to the solution. We don't have a problem with that. And most people don't when they're doing business because they understand. So there's not a problem if we're asking, and that's what's happening. So we want to solve the problem. We understand that there are citizens who are concerned, and so we want to solve the problem. So we're doing that. So thank you for your comments. Thank you. Mr. Harvey, thank you. I, I definitely agree with the increase as well. Uh, it's all about the follow-up negotiation. I don't know if the last four years, you probably haven't sat across nobody to negotiate one price. It's probably been the same, so you present the same thing every time. So I don't think they'll stop doing this again if you come up with a, a fair price, smart increase. So my question to you is, um, have you met with anybody on the council or any staff to negotiate or talk about the main priorities as far as your in-kind donations? As you mentioned, you're giving out scholarships, you're giving out several things that are good, and I heard you. But who have you talked to as far as this is a priority and this is what we need done? Because um, there's a lot of stuff in the community. Yeah, We've done youth, right. the armory, we're talking about recreation programs here. PAL boxing program, a lot of different stuff that I didn't hear. So somebody had to come talk to me and say, hey, the school needs this, but look like the agreement is with the city. Exactly. So the, I'm just trying to the, the, the only agreement we have with the city um, is this parcel agreement. That's the main thing. Um, the uh, the main agreement is with the, the golf course and the reason of the transition. Um, we focus our contributions to the youth of Ben Harbor. These, these donations don't go to specifically the youth, youth of Benton Township or of St. Joe, it's specifically Benton Harbor Youth, um, hoping that we can do, as you mentioned, help the future um, in, in whatever way possible. Um, who has been discussed with on where that money could, should be allocated? It's changed. Um, the 2018, we talked with the school and with uh, a member of the athletic department to find out what their needs are. Um, and we're open to suggestions to opportunities to have a, a greater impact. Um, we do have some key stakeholders that play a role in where those dollars go. So, so I'm gonna say again, who, so nobody with the city, the, the contract, the agreement you need right now is the city, not with the school, right? And the city can do what they want to do with the money. I'm trying to figure out, have you met with the city staff to figure out what priorities need to be done to move forward or how you gonna allocate the money? What you no, doing? Sir. What you doing? Okay, so you have it. No, sure. I, that's my only thing. I think the city needs to mm -hmm. figure out what are the main priorities mm -hmm. and allocate some of this money. <laughs> so they have, you can say, okay, we're trying to get the army fixed. How much is it? Mm -hmm. We need 400 grand within two years. How do we get that done? Mm -hmm. That's all I'm saying. And no, and, and it should be no for an answer. And I agree on you know, some of what you're saying, but I think with this moving forward, if the city, uh, like you said, need to get together. Put priorities together and yeah. say you know, they, these these are our wish list. Yeah. And these you know these service states want to get done, and then you go after the the, the funds and say how much can come from this. You know because like it's a standard capital campaign, right? You, you, you yeah. identify where you're asking yeah, so. for contributions. It's hard to go in and dictate to right contributors where they right. put their dollars right 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 to have that as a resource right. would be tremendous to us right. so yeah. we can figure out what what the city right. thinks is the greatest yeah. um, the focus of us the onus is going to be on the youth though. right um, and so yeah. so however I, I think that's a great idea and i welcome that mm -hmm. mr chair uh, and further to answer your your question mm -hmm. the start of this was receiving the contract mm -hmm. to see what is being offered the negotiation starts after this. I'm clear on that. Huh? Yeah. No, they got to do the project, so we yeah. yeah, but we started negotiating now that we have the contract. Commissioner Evans. Uh, you're yeah, right uh, about what you're saying. But you negotiate, don't don't say that because you can already have your ducks lined up before they even come to the table. This, yeah. We want ABC or don't even come talk to us. Well, I want to see what they That's on a different level. Yeah, that, that's real. Mr. Uh, 
Get I gotta get used to that myself. But anyway, uh, back to the volunteers that I was listening to, Commissioner Henderson, and uh, uh, also uh, our city manager. Solutions is the best thing to me, kids, is my passion. I can care less. Make it a ball, swim, I don't care. As long as our kids are taken care of. On the volunteer part, uh, I'm looking at a way that how how are the youth how do they sign up for that is uh you mentioned something about organizations are paid for that that 125 the uniform thing so uh for example uh boys and girls club they'll come to you with a list of kids they could absolutely, absolutely. i mean is that um, the way they kids, do it uh 21 and younger uh do not have to pay to volunteer we waive that fee and there are set committees that we uh, welcome juniors to uh, volunteer on. And that is shared with a lot of youth organizations. It's shared with all the schools, the athletic departments mainly, because that's where we see a lot of the excitement mm -hmm. for volunteering and involvement. So if we have some, uh, so once 21 and over have to pay the fee. 22 and over, correct. Right. So we know in reality, every as uh, back to uh, Commissioner Henderson's point, there are some that 21, 22 don't have one clue about what golf is about. Uh, there's also some at that age range that might not have that money to pay to volunteer and they might want to. So my solution to that would be, is there some type of way if we came up with a certain amount of them, say we came up this off the top of my head, we got 10 of them. Is there a certain way that we can match half world? I mean, this PGA pays the other half. So you like you got ten. You need 125 from each one. Say we come up with five. The city comes up I with would, five, and PGA I would, comes up with, I would, with five. I would take care of those ten in a heartbeat. Like if someone really right. needs wants to be a part of our championship and needs some help, right. we're going to help them out. Right. We just can't do it for all fifteen. No, right. right. No, I understand. No, I understand. I just threw the top ten yeah, on my especially the, especially as uh, you know the youth uh, or um, if, even if they're right over that twenty one, it doesn't matter age. Um, we'd be more than happy if they want to be a part and help us for the championship. We would make sure that we find a way. Thank you, much. Yeah, absolutely. All right. For the sake of time, uh, the uh, what we're going to do the item that we're discussing now. For this is the uh, uh, the agreement. And we're going to ask that this agreement uh, here with the uh, recommendation for, uh, for the 800 move to the uh, Personnel Finance Committee uh, for Wednesday. And then the other questions as to uh, golf, what, uh, what they can do and all this stuff. Actually, to bring these questions back to the Golf Oversight Committee meeting this uh, on the uh, 13th. And uh, this month, this month, Monday, yeah, so Monday, yeah, you. and so, yeah. Is there, um, I will not be in town uh, next oh. week if oh. I need to be a part of uh, that meeting. Uh, the, golf, the golf will say, yeah, I don't, I don't normally attend those, but uh, oh, okay. I won't be available next week. So if we need to, uh, okay. if you need, would you like me to be there, then they would have to find an alternative date right to join okay. us. Right. I'd be happy to. Um, um, I do. I do want to make sure that a couple tweaks are made, the date error, and then the recommendation right. um, before, and I can send that over to the. Which is because it's just the twelfth instead of the eleventh. It's um, the eighteenth. Uh, eighteenth. Yeah, I don't know why I, that yeah. that mistake was my my name. I made that. Right. No, that's the eighteenth. Okay. I already noted. Did you? Hear? If I may, just 30 seconds, uh, while we have legislation and personnel and finance and public safety and recreation in the room, um, I may not be at the next meeting, but this is a perfect opportunity thinking about our youth with the event that we just hosted at the college. That was very costly. If we could put together something like a people's budget, youth budget or whatever, something set aside for purposes just like this for our youth. And we can make the decision as to what we need to do if we need to dip in and, and make sure that some of them can attend the event. 
or we need to host something outside of the ram of the golf tournament or whatever, <coughs> just so though that we're doing something for the youth in the community would be wonderful. All right, thank you. Uh, I just want you guys to realize, did you get that? that? It's not just the concession stand that's been happening by the There's a whole lot of parking. Uh, concession stand, just to clarify, concession stand would remain open. <coughs> we did not provide a lease one close that down. The park, the beach itself, business as usual, <coughs> the concession stand, the only thing we would like is to avoid having concerts or any no, event going on at the pavilion. <laughs> as well as we need the ability to um have the ability to put structures up in the areas denoted and crowd control and that's on the uh parking area there at the pavilion is that where you store your heavy equipment and no, no where, heavy equipment is stored in the area with is stored at that parking area right there it, it was really not a parking area it just looks like a parking area in front of the pavilion. And we've had problems over the years, so I need to know if that's the area that you are speaking of that you want to have control of it during the PGA. I'm not familiar with whatever area you mentioned. So you just want to you just want to control that parking area as you come into the gate. And that's on and the and the three holes that you already have. We we don't really have any concern about them three holes, but the areas that you are going to occupy is just going to be in um the parking area. Yes. Am I correct? Yes. Yes. And inside hole seven eight nine, and then where these other par parcels are identified, we have people movement in those areas. Um, <clears throat> So, where do we get the eight hundred dollars a day from? It popped out, so I need to keep that seven too. days. Huh? Seven days. Each. Each. Oh, that's what we charge for the fee. What the fee is? Oh, so. Eight hundred dollars cost based on the yeah. benefit of our system. If you got a question, you got it. Okay. You got it on the bill. I, I need to know where that eight hundred dollars come from. That's what. That's so you saying that if that's a what the probation citizen, read from? If a Ben Harbor citizen wants to do the probation, it's cheaper. Well, what would we gather if someone else came to rent the pavilion? Is it eight hundred dollars? Well, uh, Come on, let, let me let me tell you, we will study what that is. Yeah. As a matter of fact, this okay. is so important to everybody. Yeah. I'm going to make sure that we have a workshop session. There you go. This. Agree. There you go. Get input from everyone. There you go. Okay. The, the, uh, one thing I would like to make the um, committee aware of is we start communicating some of the parking um, in roughly March. April. We have to prepare some stuff for our volunteers. The only people that park out there are volunteers that work in that area. Um, and we need to start being able to say, hey, yeah, this is where you're going to park. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if this is something that you know needs to take longer, that it is going to cause a little bit of our concerns when we communicate to volunteers and give them that spot. I, know you, I think it's great that you guys are going to work through it because hopefully in 22 and 24, this is an easier conversation and it's not a surprise and, and we can streamline this. So, um, and the last time they were here, uh, the citizens really griped about not having opportunity to make money. So there was a big effort, and I don't know if it was the PGA or Cornerstone man that gave us opportunities to be vendors. It didn't work well because none of the shuttle buses that carry the people from place to place stopped in Benton Harbor. So everyone that invested money in whatever was their vending trying to sell lost money. So I'm saying one time we talked about souvenirs and 
people selling souvenirs. So the PGA said, no, we can't put the PGA on it. But my question is, can we say Benton Harbor, Michigan, host the PGA and sell that during this time? Because people are walking, people want to take something home, or people want to know that it happened here in their community. But we got to find some way for us, the general public, to make some money. We really do. I mean, we tried and it didn't work, but we got to keep trying to find some way to give our young people, as well as our old people, an opportunity to make some money. And, and what I would, would love to just respond to that with is um, in 2018, um, there were 599 temporary jobs paid out over $600,000 um, for vendors. And those opportunities are, our vendors come in and they reach out to local employment agencies in the area. And those local employment agencies then work to provide those opportunities. So, so the opportunity temporary services is, is temporary. Oh, yes, oh. Yes, so yes. you work through a temporary service. I do not. No. I mean, they do. The they, 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 they work through uh, temporary services in the area. Um, mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, one was created in 2012 specifically for this event that grew into our business. Um, so we try, and it's it goes back to uh, what the lady was saying about how we get that message out. We'll, we'll continue to try to do that. Do you have data as to how many Benton Harbor locals, not 49022, but Benton Harbor locals were employed in them 600? Unfortunately, I do not. You um, do, not. do not. That's through our vendors. So they reported how many they hired in 49022. Okay. Oh. Um, and then how many they hired. And so, do uh, is there a yeah. blanket permit? So I, uh, one of the things that I was at, I saw local people that I knew, and I, I had an opportunity to speak to someone else. It probably was about five at this particular uh, one that I was sitting at, and there were several throughout that had food, vending, and all of that. But at the one that I sat at, there were five local young people, black people, that were actually serving and doing other things. And I was just like, what are you guys doing? You know, speaking, I had an opportunity to talk at the, just the, the pavilion that I was sitting at. So there were people from Benton Harbor that took advantage of the, the jobs that were available during that temporary time. Okay. There were people. Okay. I, I, I need to hear that. Uh, they don't have documentation to prove it, but I can, you know, you can visually see it yourself. But I really know that if we as a people are going to be able to get involved in the PGA, we should got to be able to make some money. There's got to be some way for us to make some money. And it's got to be some way for Cornerstone and the PGA to help us. Because the last time it didn't work. And they they tried to reimburse some of the people some of their money. But the guys that brought all of the crabs and stuff up from Louisiana, they lost big. They never come back to Ben Harbor. They lost big. Could be the location. Yeah. Okay, we got to move on. Uh, we got can one we, last question. Can we put that Let's in go. our conversation through they, the chair? They go to the... Uh, Thank you. The, yeah, the, the what do you call it? The workshop? Yeah, okay. Work session. Uh, work session oh. on that. Okay. <laughs> One last question, then we got to move to the uh, next item. question is it's, it's basically two stages. I think your vendors also is responsible for like vending, Notre Dame football games, and other other <laughs> <major vendors. laughs> Okay, yeah. So my uh, Masonic organization, we volunteered the last time. And, I, and it goes off of 10 percent wherever you make the 10 percent they'll try to give back to your organization but, but it was very difficult to, to to make any money doing that but on north shore you only got one food vendor on north shore correct right before you go up north shore hill and you got uh north shore and making boatloads of money mm. okay yeah. and you have locks on on whole over nine, nine that they're actually nine. In, uh, so the total how many food vendors do you have along north shore and along the perimeter where they're walking where many of your where many of the uh fans are walking we have one official food vendor it's levy restaurants okay they, so they, they have do the concessions and they we were able to bring in a local couple local food trucks in 2016 and 2018 we're going to continue doing that we think it's very important and it's a nice addition um, the North Shore is it's public property, right. a public area right. that we can't 
we can't tell them to shut down. And they're good partners, they, and they do a great job. Yeah. Um, but that's that's outside of our control, and yeah. that's their own yeah. area. Um, on, along North Shore, we have, uh, I'd say, a concession on our main entrance, which is Graham and North Shore. And then we have a concession out um, so, on North Shore and, and Clock. So after the railroad tracks, the city can have a few independent food vendors on, on that public property. Uh, no, we do restrict uh, the road there. Um, if we are going to have... Um, no, I'm talking about on North Shore. Uh, so restriction is, is stopped. Not going down to the... It's stopped at the railroad tracks, it and it uh, opens back up past um, North Shore. And so we restrict that road, and that is that is inside the gates, so to say. Um, and you have to have a, um, a, a pass to get into there. Okay, so... I'm talking about a vendor, though, having a vendor set up on the sidewalk. or It's not an area we would, we would set a vendor up because of traffic flow, and we have trolleys that run through there, um, and we have spectators walking. It would be, that's why we use Gene Clock Park for local vendors and local food trucks, is it's a great area um, for us. All right, thank you, sir. Okay. Appreciate it. Uh, next uh, item on the uh, agenda. Uh, creation of a park and recreation oh, yeah. department. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is her. No, uh, he, well, he's up first. Oh. Commissioner Evans. Yes, you got the mic. Yeah. Uh, just on, on, on the uh, apartment service fee, uh, I guess what I would like to do is just throw my hat in the ring for that. Well, we're, talk, we're not talking about the parking service. No, no. Parking rent. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. That's the department. Parking, yeah. Uh, parking, rent, if creating that department, I would just like to let this person know that I would like to throw my hat in the ring for that. Uh, working with that department, either editing it or working with it closely. Uh, because there is so much that can be created there for you, which could stop some violence, also create jobs, not only for you, but for the city as a whole, seniors, whatever, uh, have much experience in creating all types of venues, leagues, baseball, whatever, I the whole thing. Uh, so basically, I would just like to throw my head in there and, and let you all know, because there's a lot of revenue. A lot of people don't know or don't understand. Just because it's a park doesn't mean you can't can't draw revenue. Uh, <coughs> draw all kinds of revenue from a park, as long as it's structured right, the programs are structured right, and there are programs and events that people want to go to. Uh, other than that, that's all right. Thank you. Uh, what you, if you could, you know, as you keep these ideas, and you could you know, start formulating them to maybe some paper for uh, discussion. Continue these conversations in the uh, I'm bringing the next meeting because I already have them wrote down. Right, let's do let's do that then. If you can get to, if you got something that you can share, you know, so we can have uh, some idea of what you're talking about when we get here too. So for the same time, gotcha. Right. Commissioner Thank Adams. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Um, uh, I um. I'm glad that this is coming back up because I think the, the first time it came up was in uh, planning and economic development. Actually, I think that the department that needs to be created, just my opinion and suggestion, is that it be connected with our community block grant dollars and funds that come in here for this community. And it should be a, a, a sustainability and planning and economic development department that consists of our parks and recreation department. Keeping all of those things together and making sure that we're working for the same common goal of making things sustainable, period. 
Well, I think you got on point with that in the past uh, years ago. The community development department, the Parks and Recreation, was uh, a lot of it was funded out of the summer jobs. You know, the, the kids working in the parks and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So, I mean, they are those are some of the things that we probably need to put back. Exactly. Or, or, or just a youth department itself to where we have um, maybe some old some older youth from ages 20 to 30 possibly helping and overlooking applications of hiring the youth for summer jobs 30 <laughs> yeah yeah they, they'd be closer but uh, we did do yeah, just making everything work together just just I mean we have we have too many loose loose pieces already in the community and more division is something that we don't need so bringing everything together that it works together for the common good of us all would be what i suggest you know basically what you're saying and, and you know you said it all the time is that you got to go back and do some of the things that worked, worked in the exactly past. So, exactly uh, we all know what the problem we know what we lack in it exactly uh, we got to just go back to Doing some of those things but exactly they work yeah yeah mr Harvey. thank you with this topic i'm excited that you guys even discussing it um i used to run a nonprofit organization here in Ben Harbor. it went very well and that organization is still in existence regardless of what some moles on sale around Ben Harbor. <laughs> first chance incorporated is doing very well no issues nowhere for those who are confused about it, if you ever have any questions, come to the horse's mouth if you're confused about what's going on with First Chance. So second, second, I'm not here looking for a job. Two years ago, I emailed all the commissioners who was involved trying to apply for a specific job. Darwin Watson, who was in place, told me, man, you sure you want to work for 50000 I'm mad. So when he said that, I'm like, I can, you just tell me what I need to do. I'll find the funding for me and I'll find funding for programs and you evaluate wait me every 30 days to see what what you like how you like whatever so I'll bag you and say I don't need this I want to come back and help my community because I'm working and I got skills and I got a skill set well I'm gonna get paid and it ain't gonna stop and can't nobody stop that so I think in the city BG there is funding also, as the city moves forward, you have to hire certain staff members that got a skill set to go out and get these dollars for you. And I'm hoping the city manager evaluating everything that's going on because with the PGA guy, I know him too. I've been around. And if I speak about what happened way back when I was involved, you'll see how certain stuff is going on now because they dictate how they spend this money. But yet, my question was, you still haven't came to the city and the city commission can't accept them saying oh we'll, we'll get with you or we'll talk about it later it's got to be the armory is messed up city bg can't fix all of it we don't have no general fund to fix it we need this additional help mm -hmm. and they're not going to say no so you have to have the power of negotiation to, to make this recreation program work because what, what, what staff are going to put it together? The commission can't do everything. They got to give the city manager direction to do certain stuff. The retreat's not going to do everything when y'all sit out and talk hours. That's not going to do it. What staff are going to do it? So when you all go out and recruit and create job descriptions as far as personnel and city manager, you have to make sure a staff have a skill set to get something done where you can say, go get this job done and make it happen. So also, PAL, PAL, PAL is associated with about 20 different programs, 30 maybe. The national organization is in Charlotte, North Carolina. When I seen the check presented, I was like, oh, that's awesome, what are they doing? And then I hear some small pieces, which is a great start. That can partnership, there's money in PAL as well through the police department. I don't know what else they're doing, but they can take it to a whole another level because you can't just rely on the boys and girls club to do your recreation. That's only one piece. Exactly. Everybody can't go to the club. So you got to have scattered sites and other parts of recreation going on in the community. And there's dollars out there, but I sit here and look, I'm like, man. And a lot of stuff I don't say because I've been talking to the wind with some people.
but there are dollars out there. If a local small organization called First Chance can go out to get dollars and do an A133 audit and come up clean all the time, even though darts are thrown everywhere where you don't want them to come clean, but we still clean, I'm still here for those people who don't understand me. <laughs> but certain monies are there for the city. When you say the city of Ben Hartman going after this money, how many times have we went out the National Power money? How many times have we wrote to kill all community foundations? Kill all corporations? For separate youth organizations? None. We can go look it up on the computer. That's how I know. But when I was speaking this a year ago to the city manager, it was, you know, it was going, if he was there, I'll tell him. So I, I can say it. When I was speaking to Darwin Watson, he wasn't trying to hear me. I told him I didn't want his damn job. He wasn't trying to hear me. I was just fighting for the kids. My kid's not here. I don't work in Ben Hart. I don't owe nobody nothing. My family here. I got cousins and you know, neighborhood folks that I deal with here. So I ain't, further, I ain't trying to get no job. I ain't trying to take nobody's job. I'm trying to get in the mix and help my kids in these neighborhoods. Because there's no baseball for you. Come on, when right. the summer, go to the union. Right. What do you think? Mm -hmm. they know. Take my son, we go shoot that. Where am I at? But we know when we go to Kalamazoo and Battle Creek. For my nine year old, we had every park. I'm still in the hood, north side, wherever in Battle Creek, Kalamazoo. But here, that's where everybody take their kids to St. Joe. Ask around the room right now and say, Where your kid go to school? Say, Ben Harbor? Where they play summer sports at? We don't have anything. All the money we would put in Union, Broadway, playground material. We don't, you mean to tell me there's no summer programs there and no staff here to put it together? So anyway, we just got to, I just want to let the, this body know there is money and we just got to start hiring the right staff and we'll create these departments, put people in place that can get the job done and not just a whole lot of conversation. All right. How, you got I, to, I have to make some comments about that. <laughs> Um, I agree with Mr. Harvey on an opportunity to work for, for them for about 15 years. Um, and so it was one of, before I went to where I am now, I was in my pocket for 15 years. So that organization ran for about 15 years and ran uh, summer programs that were awesome. Um, you didn't see a lot of the issues that you see um, happening with kids fighting and stuff, walking, uh, walking home from school because staff from that organization did walk alongside the roles to kind of help with the, the programs that was going on at youth and, and, and uh, union and some of the other parts and the people from the city that were employed through the organization was very, it was very powerful to see um, that happen and um, how uh, the programs ran in the city. And so we just don't see that. And uh, it will be great uh, to have this again. And like you said, it's about having the right people in place to actually run that. That's the key. Yeah, no. Like you said, this unity. Like you said, this unity in the community. No, no, she wants to order. Let me help her out. I only asked through the chair because when something that terrific is going on, this is that's what you're still running. Let me say, I'll be quick. I hate Greg Molly here. I hate Greg Molly here. All right, one at a time. Dave, Dave Whitwall, Jeff Noll, Leroy Harvey, Mark Ross. It come a time where, well, Leroy, why don't you just work for the school? No, I can't hire felons that used to sell drugs 20 years ago. I need my guys to go knock on doors in the neighborhood. I need my guys to go to jobs and say, your son acting up. I need my guys to be at the park to stop the fights. I need my guys at the dances we throw to take care of certain business. Every, some people mess up. If you work for the school, you can't have a felon. But it's a lot of good people who have made mistakes yeah. and cleaned their act up. All right. So I told them, you can't give me 85 to come work up under the school district to be the program manager. So we just don't send all the money to the school and the Boys and Girls Club, and they're going to work together and just have first chance to get out, you know, scoot over. They ain't use those words. But that's what that's what happened. And I said no, so I lost one of the biggest cranks I had. So we had to do smaller programming and small events. But I wasn't going to go work for the school. I can, I can be creative and do a lot of stuff. So you took all my creativity away 
And now I can't hire nobody. Then when the school, go, go ask about the program at the school now, man. And then when, go ask about the after school program, the summer programs, when we have five to 600 kids there, when we come to all events, six, seven hundred, six, seven hundred deep with parents, and somebody have to say, well, Dave, we want to have to say, oh, we got glad to see the boys and girls come like, hold on. Mm. You don't see this one chance in the All right. Um, yeah. For the sake of time. <laughs> That's what for the sake of time, please, uh, what we're gonna do, this that'll be a continued conversation. You're preaching to the choir. Right. You know, glad <laughs> that some of us folks are starting to get involved. That was one of my things about, you know revitalizing this community is going to have to happen from the inside out uh, and those type of things it's just just got to be done and so if we stay on it and make it happen and go back to some of those things that work for us you know we just got to do it key thing is you know like you say getting the, the right folks at the table getting it done uh we got about 12 minutes left and we had one item that we we got we got it well we, we're gonna do this item here, and that was to uh, we needed some some education about this uh, the Twin City Sustainability mm -hmm. uh, Harbor yeah, Revitalization yeah. Initiative, and we're gonna yeah. turn these twelve these twelve minutes over to the city manager to uh, I think Commissioner Henry had some questions that she wanted to be brought up to date before we had some meetings and stuff. So, uh, do you have anything that you want? To if I'm not mistaken, the chair, um, Commissioner Henry, I think, was talking about a session, a session for everybody. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that's going to be kind of hard to do because it's, it's, you're having a hard time getting the, 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 the date. So, how, well, you know, we can start it somewhere. Maybe, maybe all nine ain't going to show up. The joint meeting is set for uh, January 22nd. Well, maybe so, I can go to the, if I'm the only one who's dumb on this map. No, that's not dumb. That's not dumb. No, that's let me, I don't need you to justify what I'm saying about me. <laughs> Have it. That's a good idea. Well, if I'm the only one, I can go to the city manager's office. And you can show me what expenses you so my little tea brain will say, Oh, I understand. If y'all ain't interested, then y'all don't need to get it. Okay, we can y'all make an appointment for each other then? Sure. Okay, he wants one too. You you can come with me. I'll let yeah. you get it in. I won't go and absorb it all. Can you send an email out to anybody who wanna come get a you do it on a Sunday? Yeah. Everybody be at home. Okay. All right. If they're serious. <clears throat> Some may not know, some already. Not gonna get me. Yeah, some already already don't know they don't need it. So it's the ones who think they need it. Send an email at each of each Yeah, get right. right. with it. So so yeah. Okay. All right. I don't, I need clarity. What happened to the last one we were talking about? What What's going to happen? Which one? We just kind of smooth it up. We, oh, the one that we we're going to we we gonna continue to discuss it. We can't stop it right now. But we're going to continue to discuss it. What are we going to discuss? Well, Send it to play. We didn't already made a point that we know something needed to be done. Well, bring your ideas back to. Uh, well, let me say this. We've had a department before. It ain't nothing new. You ain't got to reinvent the wheel. Go back. You still got to put it together. Oh, all of a sudden, pop out the head. It's, not, it's just not for you to do it. It's for us to ask the city manager to put his staff on it. And bring it back at a reasonable time for the next discussion. It's yeah. nothing new. Planning economic development, send it. Commissioner. Um, yeah. Just a note. Um, uh, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the, um, Getting started on the you know, citywide cleanup. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Citywide cleanup. Uh -huh. What's the question? So it'll be on the next agenda. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Well, All right. is it is it something that's gonna come out of this committee, or are we just gonna kick the can down the road a little bit more? Because we have thirteen parks that's just dumped on us, and and we're already in a new year. And the and the and school will be out. I have a solution. 
Go ahead. I've been, I've been thinking about this. My kids are no longer um, at that age, and they play baseball during the summer youth uh, program. But I would um, make a recommendation that we um, get um, uh, former Commissioner Harvey uh -huh. <laughs> involved. All right. The, the, the direction should be from the city council to the help. city manager mm -hmm. to dig deep in here and come back with a recommendation on how we can get you started. Mm -hmm. Further discussion. If you want to help. Okay. Chairman. Ladies and gentlemen. Help. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Are you been taking notes? Yeah. <laughs> I, I see you right, sir. <laughs> the whole idea of the Parks and Recreation Department came from the city manager. Yeah. Okay, so the city manager is already ready to talk to you about this in your. Uh-uh, don't you say that. <laughs> don't you say that because that's public information and I don't want to always hide behind a door. Well, talk about something. Commissioner, well, we got to, you, you and I are not going to debate. We'll do it your way. But we still need to do it in a retreat. Okay. This is something, this is January. Uh, Come May. Uh, Come May, the kids get out of school and we have nothing for them to do. And nobody to take care of our problems. But well, you know working. That, we're working on it. Bring it to the next meeting. Can we, can we, can we solve two problems with one stone? Can we solve two problems with one stone? Can we solve two problems with one stone? Can we break the stone? Can we solve two problems with one stone? Yeah, you did. After we bring our trash back in house, upgrade more people to that department and they can help to clean the parts and stuff. Get the right nails and we'll put it on the table. Everything on the table.